Good morning, Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, Sofia, and good evening, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we're starting this week with an uh, excellent opportunity to hear and see how uh, which are the opportunities for starting new business uh, uh, in terms of uh, COVID crisis, uh, Bulgarian new businesses in the United States. And uh, this week marks uh, a series of uh, events of Armchan Bulgaria with uh, friends and partners uh, across the ocean. Today we've got Ivo Konstantinov and Luka Kachako from the uh, commercial department of the Bulgarian Embassy at the uh, American capital. And on Thursday we'll have the Department of Justice uh, speaking on FCPA. But today the topic is very economic-wise and business-wise. So without further ado, I'll, I'll pass the relay, I'll pass the floor to Ivo, who has an excellent presentation based on uh, his uh, experience on the ground. What the ground, Ivo, you've got to cover uh, how to start a business uh, in the United States. So glad to have you with us and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, friends. And uh, can you hear me well? Can you confirm? Yes. Excellent. Uh, greetings from Washington DC in a in a environment of election campaign and second wave COVID scare and quarantines. Uh, we are teleworking from homes and uh, taking turns in staffing the embassy, uh, but uh, generally speaking, we are in lockdown as well right now. Uh, we uh, we're very happy that the two of us will present today. It's uh, me in Washington DC that I cover the East Coast of the United States, the Deep South, as the Americans call it, and the Midwest. And Lyubka Kachakova, based in Los Angeles, covers the West Coast and the mountain, the mountain Western states like Utah and New Mexico and Arizona uh, are in her domain. So we've divided the US. There is only two of us covering the biggest economy in the world with $21 trillion of dom gross domestic product, 350 million population, $3 billion exchange between Bulgaria and the United States every year, half of which in commerce, in commodity trade, 1 billion in exchange of services and the rest in tourism investment and in uh, immigrant remittances. So $3 billion in the largest economy of the world and there's just two of us so we cannot even scratch the surface of the potential here all we can do is educate our friends so thank you amcham for this opportunity today and um, i will only rush through a few interesting aspects of mostly the commodity trade i i cannot go anywhere near the service trade tourism and investment we are not going to be able to cover today important topics like raising capital for investment projects, which we are also heavily involved in, uh, travel and tourism, and uh, startup uh, dynamics and technology transfer are issues that we cover, but probably will not be able to, to touch on today for, the, for lack of time. Um, so as I said, uh, $3 billion exchange uh, being exchanged between Bulgaria and the United States, um, and that is rather impressive given the, uh, the, the challenging environment that the U.S. market is, as we're going to talk today. Uh, and I I'm just would like to check if you can see the changing of the slides. Do you see well the new slide now? Checked. Yes, we can Excellent. see it. Excellent. Um, so what uh, the reason I'm showing this to you is to pinpoint the enormous potential of the United States for Bulgaria. Even as we speak, the United States are the second largest export partner of Bulgaria outside of the European Union. The first one being Turkey, which, mind you, is a neighboring state. Sometimes China overtakes the U.S. as uh, the second largest export partner. Uh, but uh, one, one fun trivia I just wanted to point out is that we export three times more to the United States than to Russia, for example, which is really impressive because Russia was like our domestic market, like the European Union for Bulgaria for 40 years in communist times. Today, 
the US vastly, vastly supersedes uh, Russia as a trading partner for, for, for Bulgaria. Uh, um, our our trade uh, structure with the US and, and on the export side is really impressive. It's very healthy and very diversified. It's it's not monocultural, but uh, if there's there's two items I need to uh, pinpoint to focus on that uh, uh, are a majority in the trade uh, a, a Bulgarian export structure to the US. What what America buys from us, so to speak. It's uh, the machining parts and uh, tooling and uh, and uh, various tools like lathes and robots, uh, number one. And, and number two is the copper because Bulgaria is one of the largest world copper producers and uh, essential oils. The essential oils are partly thanks to the Bulgarian traditions, but not only it's an American investment in Dobrich that generated a quadrupling a quadrupling of trade of essential oils between Bulgaria and the United States, maybe to reach $50 million of exports from Bulgaria, starting from 13 million. So uh, the the, Dobrich, the American investment in Dobrich was a game changer in that dynamics. This is an, in terms of structure. Um, one of the things that we want to educate our people about is that how much really worth the American market is. I think it's a no-brainer and the reason uh, that you have all joined our presentation and this event today uh, will be preaching to the choir. You already know that and I'm sure you're interested in working with the US, exporting to the US, uh, tackling the US market. But uh, I, I wanted to just focus on a few important issues, not reading my slides. This presentation will be available for all of you after that. I want to say just one thing, why the US is worth it. In addition to uh, the good payment discipline here and uh, the high margin, uh, high volume uh, uh, environment that the US allows that we can achieve with our products and services, uh, one additional factor is that uh, the, the US acts as a globalization multiplier of your product. If you manage to brand and market a product under your own uh, brand name or specifics in the US, it almost automatically goes global because uh, the dominating uh, business and cultural uh, role of the United States worldwide. So succeed in, in Rome, you have succeeded in the entire empire. Make it in America, you've made it worldwide. And that's worth the investment. Uh, in addition to that, you know that it's a big market and there's nothing new that I'm saying here, but it's really impressive. Some of the, some of the volumes of consumption and uh, imports and uh, market capacity in the United States are mind boggling. Just the food market is $1.4 trillion of food products, 110 billion of which is uh, is uh, specialty imp import imported, and the size of the specialty and uh, deli deli delicatessen, as we say in Bulgarian, uh, deli market in Bulgaria, including ethnic Mediterranean specialty foods, is ninety billion dollars, and that is a high yield, high margin uh, uh, area. Uh, furniture market, ten billion dollars a year. Uh, wine market, thirty four billion dollars a year. In uh, most product segments, the United States is the largest consumer market in the world. I, I am almost sure for mo mo most of your products. But that doesn't mean that uh, as uh, the, the old, uh, the old uh, experts in, in the communist state-owned enterprises used to say, my product, if, it, if I take my product to America, it will sell itself. I've heard that numerous times and I want to um, to, to challenge this uh, this uh, notion because it's a little bit of a wishful thinking. Uh, yes, the US is the biggest market in the world for your products, high yield, high volume, high margin, but at the same time, it's highly saturated. It's brutally competitive. It contains risk in terms of the volume of your sales, which are very hard to forecast. And, uh, and uh, some other specifics. The, the three most important things we have to educate Bulgarian companies when they approach 
ask for assistance and when they want to work with the United States are uh, that it is saturated, in, it's competitive and it carries risk. It's, it's, it's difficult to predict the volumes. Uh, why am I saying this? Because a lot of Bulgarian companies come from a background of uh, non-saturated markets, whether domestically or in Central Asia. We have been successful with our cosmetics and mattresses and essential oils and uh, lutenitsas and cheeses in uh, Qatar and Azerbaijan. We are killing it in Macedonia. We dominate the Slovakian toothpaste market. But that doesn't mean that uh, uh, the U.S. market of, of this particular product will be necessarily welcoming in and of itself and automatically. A saturated market means very simply that in many of the product groups that you operate, we operate in Bulgaria, we have to create the demand. It's simply that the soil is already very hard and you have to work the soil. It's competitive because we compete with the whole rest of the world and everybody wants a piece of the U.S. consumer. Uh, you hear uh, President Donald Trump constantly complaining about that particular thing, that the rest of the world is taking advantage of the Americans being twice uh, uh, higher consumption power with the comparison to even the, 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 the second uh, following uh, in the rank. And it is very difficult to predict. Very often Bulgarian exporters want guarantees for sales from their American partners, which is uh, very unrealistic and very hard to to expect. It's too much to expect. Um, we uh, also add that uh, there are certain demographics that you have to concentrate, focus on, and the highest yield, highest margin demographics in the U.S. to target are the millennials, the young people, and, and then the educated upper middle classes on the two coasts, the east and west coast. And the uh, highest yielding products are uh, in the food and FMCG sectors, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, organic and deli and specialty foods, which uh, set the trends on the on the market, uh, which follows them two to four years later. Another specific we're going to mention briefly later is the uh, in, impressive uh, impressive revolution of online e-commerce in the in the United States, which already overtakes now because of COVID the brick and mortar uh, retail trade. When you come to the United States, uh, you have to understand that you need to focus from the get-go, from the beginning, from the start, uh, focus on a particular area of the United States. Uh, you can see an oversimplified graph of the main regions in America. Uh, when, you, when you say that you want to sell in America, it, it's almost that you've said that you want to sell in Asia or in Africa. America is not a country. The United States is not a country. It's a continent. And you have to pick your battles, you have to pick your demographics, and you have to choose the region you want to cover and you want to start from. Usually Bulgarian companies start from the Midwest. The easiest place to start is usually New Jersey because of the cost of transportation and uh, uh, excellent reach of uh, the Northeast United States, which is the second largest consumption market in, the, uh, in America. But the largest consumption market, I have to admit, is uh, the West Coast and Ca California in particular. If you want condensed consumer volumes in one place, this is California. If you want good access, this is New Jersey. If you want to feel comfortable with your own immigrant community, that is the Midwest. The choice is yours, but you have to choose. Uh, th there are very good studies available out there for the, the cost of uh, market entry. And one of the, the 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 first things we say tell Bulgarian companies that approach us is that the U.S. market is like a good ball game, like a Champions League soccer soccer game. You have to buy a ticket to get in. You have to buy a ticket, but it's worth it. And there is a cost of market entry. And to an older generation of Bulgarian business leaders who have grown up in an environment where the market entry costs were covered by the government, or today, in some cases, some Bulgarian businesses, market entry costs are covered by European Union grants. This is a difficult uh, uh, message to stomach, 
to tell them that yes, you have to pay up, <clears throat> you have to sow, wait, and then reap, and you cannot reap from the beginning. You can see in the graph that a very simple product, uh, at least <clears throat> for one SKU, one item uh, may cost uh, at least the minimum twenty thousand dollars to uh, to to place on the U.S. market, which would include your travel expenses, your communication, your uh, export manage manager's time, at least one or two visits the the databases with your potential customers uh, buying some information about the importers of your product um, and uh, participation in a trade show Dergovsku so that's that's the basic minimum for uh for uh the the, the, the code that includes the cost of market entry in the united states sometimes you need to change and rebrand your packaging is designed for southeastern Europe or for Bulgaria. You need to replace the Cyrillic, the Cyrillic from your product. That's that's a no-brainer. You think that's a no-brainer, but it's actually not so obvious to many of our companies. And we have issues. We have issues with Bulgarian brands and uh, name products, which we have to change for the United States. Our biggest uh, cosmetics producer in Bulgaria, Rubella, it's it's a it's a smallpox in in English in in, in American English. It's smallpox. You cannot use the name Rubella. In America, you cannot say Lutenica, Lutenica, or Sirene, uh, uh, but you cannot use the feta cheese either. So rebranding and uh, uh, labeling and the product development is part of your market entry costs. You have to do. I recently got an inquiry about tip of tip of chlap. It's an old communist style of bread making in Bulgaria, which is not known outside of the country, and they wanted to sell tip of chlap and uh, flour for tip of chlap in the United States. So uh, uh, getting ready for the U.S. market is part of your market entry costs. When you want to offer a product and a service uh, that are customized, uh, your market entry costs may uh, jump, uh, 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 grow up to uh, $250,000, depends on what you want to do. And you have to consider, do you want to start with the United States? Maybe you want to succeed in a European Union member state first. There are many factors for you to choose and pick your battles and which markets to expand. There are countries that are more welcoming. Here on the slide, uh, you can see a very good comparative study made by Alliance experts of uh, a different uh, uh, indexes of advantages of which markets to choose. Uh, Yes, the U.S. market is the biggest in the world, but it's not necessarily the easiest to get onto. And there are many factors you need to weigh in and leverage and uh, and consider. Uh, the, the market relevance for your product is 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 America the place that you really want to place a uh, uh, product or service of yours? The export trend, whether it's decreasing, the country credit risk, the sale price. So we can see the United States. Is very welcoming for new products. Your product is very likely to be relevant here, but uh, there is a drop of consumption because of COVID and because of uh, decreasing standards of living and uh, social uh, disparity in the U.S. society in general. Uh, of course, the payment discipline in the U U.S. is perfect. It has high, uh, very low credit risk. The sale prices, as I pointed out, in America are very good and very attractive and high margin. But the access is difficult. Maybe you want to go to an easier country where you can make less money but succeed faster. And uh, I want to also draw attention to Canada as an opportunity after the signing of the three free trade agreement with Canada. Consider the costs. We want you to choose the United States, but we want you to be educated when you do that. Before you come to us, consider this. Uh, there's also time. The factor of time is very important. Uh, the uh, the Americans call this a sales cycle. A sales cycle is the length of time, the amount of time you need from the first acquaintance, from the first phone call, from the first email to the first invoice that you write for your first sales. And sometimes, depending on the complexity of your product or service, how well known or unknown it is here, how competitive the environment is, and how well you play your cards, honestly, it may take you at least a year, up to five years to break even. And initially, you just you just spend money, you you burn cash to do the market entry, and uh, you can see some uh, graphs depending on the products with uh, theoretical assumptions of how quickly you break even. You cannot expect 
to start making money from the first month here without having invested invested something in the first place. And yes, uh, yes, <clears throat> America is a great market, the best, the biggest. But uh, the bad news is that uh, the sales cycle is very long, for, because it's such a rated. Uh, I um, it, it is extremely important every time we we talk to a lot of Bulgarian uh, companies to educate them on uh, specifics uh, and cross cultural barriers in, uh, of communicating the business communication with uh, with Americans. Uh, the biggest challenge is that uh, the Americans don't work with strangers. They don't talk to strangers. They don't reply to emails from strangers. They need uh, a networking prior to that, an introduction. You need to have met them through somebody or at a trade show or be introduced to them. And we, two people in an enormous American environment, cannot do all that for you. Our hot cards and our networks are yours for us to share with you, but we are very limited with our limited travel budget and the COVID now. So you cannot rely only on our personal business network. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to buy your way into an environment because even if you find the email of a decision maker, that doesn't mean he will ever reply to you. Actually, it means usually that he, he won't. Uh, they, they rarely reply to emails from strangers. And there's another big challenge that actually it's to reach the names of the companies and the names of the decision makers that uh, you need to approach. Sometimes a company that you want to sell to in the United States is bigger than the gross domestic product of Bulgaria with 150,000 employees like General Electric or Walmart or Costco. And, uh, and uh, it, approaching uh, such companies is like approaching a country. Uh, you, who do you want to reach? Uh, and and it, it is extremely difficult. Sometimes this information is only obtained through a special uh, uh, business intelligence uh, services that even we cannot help you. Calling the switchboard, Centrala Tapu Telefona. The switchboard of a company doesn't do it, doesn't do it. This is, if you ask me what's the hardest and most difficult challenge for my work in the United States, I would say it's this one. There is a very, very expensive uh, service in the US that actually gives you this information. The particular decision maker, the particular company you're interested in, particular market with their direct telephone numbers and email addresses. It's called Zoom Info. It's completely legal, but exorbitantly expensive. Well, another thing I just want to focus on that you have to be very short in your communication with Americans. Your emails should never be longer than three or four sentences. And always, always, always in every communication, you need to be, focus on what your partner will benefit from, from your offer, not what you will benefit. He doesn't care about your planning or manufacturing uh, or packing plant. He cares about his own benefit. And Americans are straight shooters when it comes to that and make you painfully aware of it. Uh, the other thing that you should consider in communicating with the US uh, <clears throat> partners is that you always have to have an ask, the so-called ask in your communication. What exactly do you want? What do you expect him to do? After reading your email, the American should know what he has he, he's expected to do next, clearly. Uh, don't leave him in a limbo. Um, I already said that uh, it's worth it, that it requires investment. You need to support your product even after you have made it. Otherwise, it can die in the shell on the shelf. And the holy grail of what we want most of us to do and sell in the U.S. is the fast-moving consumer goods market, which we are more or less focusing on this morning. Uh, this is a market which is impossible to, to grow at if you don't support it after, even after you have made it. Uh, it is a it is a marketing based experiential country where the consumers want to feel good about themselves when you buy when they buy your product. Uh, something very important that we have to always uh, uh, communicate to Bulgarian uh, companies uh, when they say they want to come to the U.S. mostly for the fast moving consumer goods, uh, but not only product is that if you want to make it to the retail chain, if you want to sell a final product in the retail market to the American consumer, if you're not a commodity trader like uh, agricultural grains or copper, but you want to sell a final product, it is uh, never the case that you work directly with the retailers. The retailers here have structured the relationship through a 
special type of uh, people and service called brokers. There is no such thing in the United States like what we are used to in other on other markets like an importer or a wholesaler or a distributor. 90% of inquiries we receive from Bulgaria about the United States are, will you please uh, put us in touch with an importer? Will you please put us in touch with a distributor? Will you please arrange a relationship for us with a wholesaler? Actually, none of these functions in the US are what they are in Europe because the importer is a, simply a customs broker and warehouse operator. The distributor is a tracking company. The wholesaler only aggregates volumes to already existing customers of yours. The real agent in America who takes you to the market, who positions your product on the shelves, is called a broker. <clears throat> and those brokers are usually former buyers, uh, procurement managers from the retail uh, uh, um, chains in, in the US. They're experts and, and the buyers don't, don't communicate directly with few exceptions with foreign manufacturers, except through a broker. Now, broker, a broker would work with you only if he believes in your product and uh, they usually charge monthly fees that vary between three to $10,000. It is almost impossible to find somebody to, that likes your product so much that he would invest his time, personal relationships and experience uh, accumulated for years on the U.S. market just to develop your business and your product. Americans usually tell us Bulgarians, guys, this is your business. This is your market. If you want me to place you, you need to uh, support me and pay me for that. So uh, th that's that's uh, something important to know. Um, I already mentioned that the highest yielding market are the organic uh, specialty food markets. I, I recommend if you want higher margins, to, to focus on them, not to fight in the mud with the rest of the countries with price, with the rest to the bottom. There is one fantastic, uh, there is one fantastic path to the retailers that is very quick uh, and very efficient that actually puts you in uh, one room of, in two days in a hotel somewhere in Florida uh, with 22 buyers and procurement managers of retailers. <coughs> Excuse me now. It's called ECRM. It's an Ohio-based service provider. And uh, the service costs between $700, but believe me, those are the best money you would have ever spent because they would save you two years of market entry. If you ever decide to book an ECRM event and meet 22 buyers who are actively looking for new products on their shelves, however, you have to have a broker and a distributor and an importer already because you have to be ready to talk to the buyer before you go to them, as I said. Uh, a broker is essential. Usually the buyer would want to see your product, but ask you, who is your broker? And uh, uh, maybe you are now uh, thinking that this is too impossible and too overwhelming, but the fact that so many Bulgarian companies have made it, and you can see on this slide some of them, uh, proves that it is uh, possible. Bulgarians are creative, inventive. Our products are excellent and very competitive, and actually we haven't even scratched the surface of the potential. And my calculations the personally is that we can sell easily $10 billion worth of Bulgarian <clears throat> consumer products on the U.S. market if we write our homework, if we invest. You can see how many Bulgarian companies have already made it. Our biggest fast-moving consumer goods uh, Bulgarian companies on the American market right now are Fico Sota from Schumann and uh, and and uh, Connectiva from Plovdiv, they, they sell food, food products. Um, here are some of the retailers that they've made it. The third largest uh, food uh, sales of, out of Bulgaria to the United States is not uh, Bulgarian owned, it's Greek owned, Chipita. We are in every Exxon, um, uh, Exxon and 7-Eleven and convenience store in the United States with the, uh, with the seven days uh, with the seven days pastries. So that was a major success, but because the marketing was done out of Larissa, Greece, and the Greek uh, the Greek owner uh, invent, invested in the distribution and the product placement and branding of this, this market. And now Chipita sells $13 million worth of Bulgarian product out of Kazicene all over the United States. Uh, really impressive. But as I said, it, it, life is not only consumer products and foods. We sell a lot of other uh, items to the U.S. Every American cigarette 
is made with Bulgarian tobacco in, in, in is an ingredient. The oil industry uses uh, lathes, uh, <clears throat> strugove from Sliven, and we are doing a lot of machining and tooling work for the military industrial complex in the United States and for some niche products where we have managed to position ourselves like <clears throat> like uh, off-grid solar and uh, and uh, robotics and automation manufacturing. Um, I will leave my uh, colleague uh, in California to cover more about the fantastic success of our technology companies in the United States. We are very proud of them. One of the reasons that for this success is that, uh, um, it, of course, the, the, the traditions in Bulgaria, the great savviness and maturity of Bulgarian developers, the availability of programmers in Bulgaria, the low cost of market entry, unlike in the commodity trade. Uh, and we have spectacular success stories. After the acquisition of, uh, of uh, Teleric by Progress, our currently our biggest Bulgarian software company in the United States is NetH with their product Dynamo. It's a fintech product. It's an ERP for hedge funds and investment funds. Uh, there are some uh, shortcuts, of course, and low-cost ways to get on the market. Uh, if you find uh, uh, and you want to go small, start small and on the cheap, there are ways to do that. Uh, you can use the ethnic community, the Bulgarian immigrants, to help them become a startup and start a business with your product, which is a smart thing to do. There are interesting niches like food trucks, uh, which you can uh, sell your products through. Uh, the specialty and ethnic food market, which is still very easy and uh, quick to enter. Uh, the catalog sales, which is uh, uh, almost uh, welcomes any product as soon as you pay your catalog slotting fee, which is not too big. Uh, crew crew, uh, crew uh, uh, supplies for the ships uh, and the so-called ship chandlers are a very unexplored way, but you can sell to all the thousands of ships that call U.S. harbors every day, including Bulgarian ships that come to the United States very often. Supplying ship crews is a very good business. You can start from there. You don't need to invest in marketing. It's a different dynamics. Uh, it's a different dynamics there. Uh, there are niche products that you can make tremendous money that, uh, and in the U.S. and uh, markets that are underserved. Um, LGBT minority suppliers. Uh, we are available to elaborate and explain more because it would take too long now to to elaborate on that. But there is an American saying: the riches are in the niches. The riches are in the niches. If you find a niche that's underserved, you can make tons of money. Uh, there's uh, social marketing. If you manage to uh, incorporate some corporate social responsibility and impact into your marketing message, Americans want to give to charity with their consumer behavior, and you may want to leverage that. Uh, it's a very good strategy, and you will make a difference in your own community back in Bulgaria, like uh, uh, hiring uh, hiring disabled people or ethnic minorities. E-commerce is something we are not going to have enough time to touch on today. Uh, it's tremendous. It's uh, In COVID, it already reached the volumes of brick and mortar uh, uh, retailers. But uh, you have to know only that uh, e-commerce in the United States have two ways you can do it. You can, you can do the sales and so-called fulfillment, the packaging and shipping to the final consumer uh, yourself, or you can leave a, a, a fulfillment partner to do the warehousing, 3PL logistics packaging, and the picking uh, of the of the of the orders. So Amazon is the biggest fulfillment provider in the world. Of course, it, the way you can use the Amazon fulfillment uh, service, and they charge you in the opinion of some, a very large amount of money to do all these uh, services for you. Then you're not thinking about customs and packaging and shipping and handling. So consider whether you want to service it directly out of Bulgaria or you want to use a, a fulfillment partner. Um, there is an even cheaper and low cost, actually no cost way of exporting to the United States. There is a new group of so-called export houses or export intermediaries that are Bulgaria-based that actually buy from you in Bulgaria and uh, relieve you of all the troubles of U.S. market entry that I've already listed. 
and all the investment, they take it upon themselves. There are specialty food uh, export houses already a good, healthy uh, bunch of them, <clears throat> like uh, the, those that you see on the screen. There are others for wine, uh, two main ones, uh, fine European wines and grapes and barley. There are two in California, Bulgarian wines, uh, Master Vintners and Christopher Family Partners. And uh, there are some consumer product export houses that are now gaining momentum in Bulgaria, like Silo Global, our former general consul to Chicago, uh, who is doing a good job. The problem with export houses is that, yes, you don't have any cost. Uh, they buy from you and issue you a Bulgarian invoice. Uh, but you do not have any control over the margins, the profit, and the sales, and and uh, the motivation of how much of sales these people would would uh, do. So basically, you have not uh, made it on the U.S. market. You simply are helping someone else else make more money from from your product. So it's up to you. If you don't want to pay, you don't want to know how much money you can make. There are very good uh, ways that you can finance your market entry. As I already said, it costs money to get on the, get on the, on the U.S. market. You have to buy information, you have to hire consultants. You have to hire people to get you on the shelf. You have to pay brokers. But there is a way you can fund all this. A combination of an export insurance and a good uh, American partner, even it's an innovation that I have developed that I'm willing to elaborate later with you through transfer pricing and uh, 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 transferring the obligation to your American partner, you can ensure uh, your market entry costs uh, with the Bulgarian Export Insurance Agency or COFAS and get funding from any bank or the Bulgarian Development Bank so that you can retransfer through the transfer pricing the cash up front to your American partner in order to support him in your product market entry. It's a little complicated, but there is a way that you can finance your market entry to America. Uh, there are many nuances in the transportation. The transportation to, to America is extremely important to consider which freight forwarder and shipping line you're picking because the differences are enormous. If you're not careful, you can lose one to three thousand dollars difference per container if you're not careful who and how you transport. Um, there are many opportunities to make money in the U.S. The U.S. is still lagging behind Europe in some uh, uh, industries like uh, organic agriculture, recycling, shipping and transportation, and lubricants. There are markets you can make money as a, as a Bulgarian investor to the United States. There are some investment products and very interesting things that we may consider buying and importing from America. And the American government is very aggressive in financing uh, some important things, some important things that would increase the competitiveness of the Bulgarian economy and maybe your own companies. If you buy a product line, uh, production and manufacturing equipment from the United States, the U.S. government is willing to finance you for that with very low credit risk requirements and expectations. From our point of view, this is a foreign direct investment, not just imports. And these are the uh, uh, American government agencies that help you do that. The, <clears throat> the uh, Exim Bank, the USTDA, and the World Bank's corporate arm, the IFC. Of course, the elephant in the room is COVID. COVID changed everything, but there are winners. There are losers from COVID, but there are winners from COVID. The forced digitalization of the entire population has generated new industries like education technologies, like uh, remote conferencing, like what we are using right now, and some Businesses and industries are thriving, like e-commerce, for example, and uh, public health care and remote diagnostics. So uh, try to leverage COVID as an opportunity to get on the American market and identify the high growth uh, areas that COVID has triggered. And finally, we need realistic how we, me and Lupka, uh, the trade officers at the embassies can help you. There is only as much as we can do. We are the first door. We cannot do your sales. We cannot do your business development. So um, uh, you have to have realistic expectations from us. We cannot uh, always take you to a company because we may not know anybody there. 
Um, we remain uh, available to talk to you later and have more events like this, but I want to pass the floor to my colleague in Los Angeles to add a few thoughts to something I may have missed. Lupka. Probably she is refilling her cup with some Bulgarian wine already, or it's <laughs> early for California. Uh, can you cut? Uh, can you cut uh, the presentation in the meantime to clear the screen for the people? Uh, you can stop sharing, Ivo. Can you? I will try to do. Uh, try on to. top of your screen, right. Oh, yeah, got it, got it. There. Cool. There. Lupka, over to you. Just a second to fix the mute. Or you can you only. Can you me? Okay. So what I what I can add is that um what America learns first is the patience because things happen in America very slowly for our experience and for the expectations of Bulgarian companies. Usually to entry a market in Europe, it can take one year. In America, it can take two or three years. So um, that, that was the first thing I wanted to share with you because from my experience, I, I'm almost, almost one year in, in Los Angeles. I see that a lot of Bulgarian companies lose their interest because they see that things happen very slowly for our experience and for our understandings how things can happen and may happen um what else um talking for the west coast in the us i can say that there is a lot a huge opportunities for our it sector uh, and um, the fintech solutions the artificial intelligence the cloud services big data uh, blockchain. Uh, we are very happy that we have two companies from Bulgaria present in the United States, Scale Focus and, and Blue Cross, and they're a very good example to follow. Uh, so for IT and ICT sector, it's much easier to, to enter and to penetrate in the United States. Um, for uh, fast moving uh, goods, Eva explained the major challenges. So I don't know what the focus will be on that uh, webinar. Um, now we are ready to answer all your questions. But especially for the IT sector, I can say that a lot of uh, American companies are reducing their activities right now. And there is a huge opportunity for Bulgarian companies in the ICT sector to hire people from the United States. And uh, I see some of Bulgarian companies are hiring people in the United States on the West Coast. So this is a huge opportunity for our companies. And I, my message is not to lose that opportunity. Um, how we can help uh, those type of activities. Uh, we have connections with the Bulgarian diaspora on the West Coast. Unfortunately, uh, I cannot say that this diaspora is very, very united. We know where are the major groups of Bulgarians, of high tech professionals. They are in Seattle, in the Bay Area, in San Francisco. They have their groups, they have their communities, so we can reach most of them. And if a Bulgarian company wants to have access to this community, they can rely, rely on us. So, being on the West Coast, of course, I have the companies. Um, in the field of fast moving goods, foods, uh, cheese, and, uh, and delicatessen, caviar, um, all this kind of stuff. But my major focus is to, is to support the ICT sector. And another important thing is that when we approach an American company and we offer a product made in Bulgaria, one of the first question is, is that is that was this product already successful in another large market, especially in the EU country? So it's very difficult to enter in the US if a product is not already is not already proven as a good 
in uh, in a large market in the European Union. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And it seems that uh, the sun is started to shine at your coast right now. Uh, all right. Um, Ivo, look, cool. thank you so much for your uh, presentation and your input. Uh, last year, if uh, some of you remember, uh, Ivo attended our Explore USA uh, conference at uh, Intercontinental. And uh, the things that he revealed before the audience were very, very interesting. I mean, uh, probably for a first time for a long period, uh, there was a, such an in detail, a comprehensive presentation, uh, which can compare to the content that you have already described before us. Uh, but uh, yeah, last year, it was a tremendous, uh, I would say show even because the examples, the the uh, input was uh, uh, really amazing. I will use that American expression. All right, we have to move on uh, with the webinar. We've got already a question uh, from one of our particip participants. But before moving to Q and A, uh, I would like to double check if uh, if Iloslavov is on the line. Um. Great. Ivo, you're a board member of uh, the American Chamber. Also, you are one of the pioneers, if I may say, that already made uh, excellent uh, deals with the U.S. partners. And uh, your input with that regard will be uh, very much welcome. Okay, what to say? Look, says already that we, have to, we are one of the two Bulgarian companies which are represented, with, represented in the U.S. I can I can I can share my experience with uh, uh, the work of Evo, Constantinov, and I would say we will be never there in the U.S. without Evo. And what I can what I can say in the early here is that we have already with Evo a long-term relationship, which is much before we started to work in the U.S. market, and he was very helpful in supporting supporting us uh, to come to the community and also to find the first resources and the first people there. Even those, as he said, uh, it's not about him to travel and to do our job. Everybody who likes to invest there he has to do the jobs by himself. We have to analyze the market, we have to analyze the opportunities. Luckily, we was working with plenty of American companies in Bulgaria before moving to US. And we started our business in San Jose, close to Cisco, which is one of our clients. And uh, from there, we were able in about three to four years to build something like uh, currently we have 15 million business there in US and with US companies. And the rationale here is you have really to be present there. You have to be present and you have to invest in people. You have to invest in you have to invest in building the relationship with these guys because. Uh, Today we are selling also our products, today we are selling our services there, but it was a long way and it was a long run. It is not a short run to, to come to this market. What I can share from my experience is um, that we have uh, excellent people, Bulgarians, living there, which can be a great help of any Bulgarian company coming to the place. And today a big portion of our employees there are Bulgarians. And most of them has a long, uh, long experience on the U.S. market. Our original director out of New York was working for that for um, Blackstone from other companies for some banks in the IT, and he is driving now the business, the business for us there. And what I can uh, recommend to everybody who likes to go there is, first of all, to make uh, the right portion of research in order to understand the marketplace, in order to understand the mentality and the culture of the market, not only the culture of the Americans, but the culture of the market. And then to try to start with the support of the trade associations of Bulgaria. Luka, we didn't have the pleasure to work that much with you, but what I can say is uh, without the support of these guys, uh, it will be quite tough to be at that level as we are 
Therefore, thank you, Ivo, for the great support so far. And if somebody needs really to get some shared experiences, some best practices out of it, I'm absolutely available and I'm absolutely interested to support and to help other companies to establish themselves on this market as well. That's in short for me. Thank you so much, Ivo. Much appreciated. Last year, you participated in that event, sharing your experience uh, on the uh, American soil. Uh, and indeed, uh, a big credit to Ivo and uh, for uh, a real year already to look for their uh, extreme uh, active uh, input and uh, efforts to bring Bulgarian businesses and to help them to maybe, start maybe, maybe. and grow. Danny, maybe just one more. Uh, the one thing I can say is you can be successful in the U.S. market. Even as a Bulgarian company, you can make your tenure there and you can make your successes. Uh, very important is that everything is long run. You cannot expect short results in the U.S. I can only confirm what Ivo says about the don't do's. Don't expect on the next day to be profitable. Don't expect on the next day to be famous. You need your time. But when you're there, the good news about this market is when you are appreciated, when you have and built references there, and to start from there, move on, is quite possible. And the reason is also that the American market appreciate this, appreciate references, appreciate presence, appreciate people which are working there. Therefore, once again, long run, and you need good level of support. Excellent. Thank you once again. Uh, the key takeaway here is that if you are uh, getting to the U.S. market, you have to prepare yourself for a marathon run instead for a 100 meters uh, sprint or 400 uh, meter sprint. Uh, Ivo Lupka, can you take one question, please? I've, I've got one question in the chat. I'll read it out loud for you. Uh, it comes from uh, Diana Karlova from TEDBET one of the Bulgarian companies that are already uh, uh, making their breakthroughs and probably profits uh, in the United States. Uh, uh, her question is related to the recent activity, uh, economic activity and probably policies uh, at the States. I'll read it uh, straightforward. Uh, U.S. is now focused to return back the manufacturing power and reduce unemployment by imposing uh, duties or other economic uh, barriers to other businesses or markets. And some retailers are specifically inquiring suppliers to start producing locally. What is your consideration on that? So uh, I, I will take it and she knows it in the uh, I can talk about uh, the policy side of this. Uh, uh, the current administration in Washington is in a little bit of a wishful thinking about bringing back American jobs in manufacturing. The, the worldview and philosophy of President Trump are a little bit, they belong a little bit to another times. They were very successful in his first election campaign, but if you the, the Democratic candidate is uh, less protectionistic, that would be wrong, because uh, Joe Biden has himself committed to the so-called Buy American policy. So my answer is this. Yes, this is a legitimate concern for some industries, not for all. To think that uh, some industries will come back to America is total wishful thinking. There are manufacturing activities that would never come back to the United States, because the U.S. has lost its uh, engineering capacity for that. But there are other sectors like like mattresses, which are still very mature in the, U in the US and you are facing tremendous competition from the incumbent domestic manufacturers. That is valid for the mattress market and partly for the furniture market. So this is a challenge. Then you have to find niches that are underserved by the local producers. In the case of the United States and mattresses, we have identified such areas. Nobody wants to sell mattresses to prisons, but the American prison population is the largest in the world. Just an idea, just an idea. I'm saying 
You have to find your niche. Sell to prisons. Sell to uh, 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 hospitals. Sell to uh, low-cost motel chains. Uh, sell, identify underserved areas. And then you can open and create American jobs and boast that you have created American jobs if you if you extend a part of your logistics and packaging here. Transport your product in bulk and hire a packaging uh, company and uh, you can even put the label proudly packaged in the United States with an American flag on the product and it can still be made in Bulgaria. There are uh, ways to approach this, but I have to admit it hasn't been easy for us in the past four years. The Trump administration has hit us hard in some sectors like steel, uh, like uh, uh, Bulgarian cherries, and we are we were very concerned about essential oils, but they didn't hit us there. We were hit in uh, uh, cow dairy products, for example. So yes, it is a legitimate concern. Thank you, Evo. Yeah, indeed, those uh, uh, evidence, those facts were being noted last year as well. And uh, given the fact that 2020 is very, uh, very uh, strange year, I would, I'll put it that way. Probably those circumstances uh, are be a little bit severe. I'll take the opportunity to now pass the floor to uh, Diana herself because she represents Ted. Bad, bad, actually, uh, who are making, which are making uh, some impact uh, in the American market. Diana? I, I wish you a great evening. I have to leave. Sorry for that. Ivo, Bye, thank you so much for your input and participation. Take care. Thank you. And Diana, would you yeah. mind now? Hello, do you hear me? Yeah? Okay. So nice. Nice to be here. First of all, thanks for inviting us, being um, a guest to this uh, webinar, connecting people from all over, many places you've already uh, mentioned. Uh, so just a few words. Uh, I'm uh, Diana Harlova. I'm the CEO of uh, Telbet Company. As you might know, we are a manufacturer of uh, mattresses. We are the leading manufacturer of mattresses on the Balkans and in uh, top 20 in uh, Europe right now. So uh, I just give you a brief uh, words about our business in the States. So actually our marathon, as uh, the colleagues already said, uh, has started in the year of uh, 2012. Actually, that was the year that uh, we've uh, got an invitation from um, not a small company, directly from Walmart to go and have a meeting. Uh, in their premises. Uh, so actually the first uh, touch, let's say, with the American market, uh, with the US market, uh, with us was at that year when we started to really research what are the opportunities and what are the um, requirements of this market. After that, to be honest, we've got uh, this meeting and had some research. Uh, we decided to uh, focus our operations in Europe. So at first to develop much more uh, international presence in uh, Europe, and after that uh, come back later to the to the states. And uh, our current business with the states actually started with a very hard and uh, relatively long uh, negotiations about two years ago. And uh, ideally, we started actually to uh, export uh, just a few months ago. Uh, with a strategic partner uh, that is covering the, all the states in the uh, US. And currently we export uh, more than 20 containers per month. This business we are increasing as the demand is increasing to us. Uh, just for a few months, so we have managed to double the capacity uh, that we're doing for there. And because of, uh, of course, the projects we have now, we expect to increase three to four times more in the upcoming months, which uh, the people that are manufacturing in Bulgaria, they pretty well know the problem with uh, employees and the staff. So uh, it's really not, uh, not an easy thing right now to, to be able to increase that much uh, production uh, capacity. But just to, 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 to sum up, uh, actually, it's... Uh, really not uh, um, 
easy to to sell to America. It's uh, because we we passed through a very uh, strong audit. We have passed an FCCA, which is a factory uh, highest level of uh, audit, and um, also the supply chain. Uh, there are a lot of uh, technological requirements that you have to pass, at least with the matrices. I guess also in the other industry, they're completely different from what is known uh, in Europe or in Asia, because we sell to there as well. And uh, uh, we're currently working on a two or three projects uh, with the new customers. And uh, of course, that's um, the challenge right now. You're not only entering a saturated and segmented market that, or competitive, really competitive market that, that uh, our host already uh, confirmed, but it's actually also uh, a matter of fact that all the programs right now are stimulating uh, the Made in USA. We've been invited to almost every week uh, to uh, seminars uh, and they're really um, engaging us to go and invest there to start producing locally because that will be, uh, let's say in the upcoming uh, times, uh, what is going to be required from the locals local retailers, no matter it's uh, either Walmart or Ashley or other uh, big chains. So uh, it's uh, possible to make business from distance, but when the volume becomes so big and there are also uh, some economic, um, I should say maybe obstacles, but okay, conditions, uh, you should really be, uh, let's say, dynamic and take uh, um, right decisions to, uh, in order to grow further. Uh, what you say in terms of um, agents or brokers or distributors, yes, it's correct, we've seen the same, but uh, more and more the trend now is that the retailer is looking for the manufacturer directly, and they are not willing us to spend a lot of money for consultants, actually. I know it's a, it's a must, because if you enter a new market uh, in the US, uh, no matter if you meet a lot of agency that are um, supporting your investments uh, in the local states, uh, nevertheless, uh, to work direct, it's, it's really a challenge. Uh, you have to be aware with all the federal laws and that are different in all the states. So it's, it's really not an easy market, but uh, of course the consumption is big. Uh, there is a boom now of the real estate market, as you are already aware. So our industry is actually one of the gaining uh, ones. So there is a tremendous uh, demand for matrices right now. People are changing locations because of COVID. They move from the big cities to the to houses in uh, surroundings. So um, our industry is in a, in, a, in a great demand right now. It's just a matter of fact how we are going to figure out the puzzle. Of course, uh, from the perspective uh, perspective of a uh, long term, that's very important, as you as you already said. So I think uh, I hope we have managed to give some clue for the the companies uh, here that are willing to grow further or to start. It just to uh, if we have to conclude, uh, market is big, very strongly competitive. And you have to uh, have a very uh, high level of uh, professional experience here in, in the manufacturing plant in order to pass all the certification and the hard audits. Many thanks, Diana. Yeah, indeed. Thank you. If you yeah. have any questions, please just. Yeah, it's a good occasion to remind uh, our our friends here in the webinar that if they have some practical uh, questions uh, to all the speakers, not only to Eva and to uh, Lupka, but uh, to the people from the business, you can address them here directly uh, uh, or via myself. And uh, we, we've got a third person uh, who, entrepreneur, who started uh, and moved uh, their business uh, at the United States. Uh, he's wearing in purple i cannot see him right now mr zakharyev are you with us still yes i am here yeah great uh the floor is yours tell us uh, how herty is doing in, in the united states and uh 
How did you manage to succeed? Uh, for the good presentation, I fully agree with the main uh, point of uh, this presentation, and it's really very difficult to enter to the US market. Uh, Henty is uh, producing uh, uh, packaging materials. We are B two B business. Uh, that's why uh, the, now in the last few years, uh, the most uh, for the wine, especially for the wine industry, is the aluminium screw caps. That's why we are uh, establish our subsidiary in uh, California. And I can tell you that it's really a huge market, but fully agree that this is a difficult market. Market, and I hope healthy will uh, reach the even break point, and the next year we will uh, move uh, on the we go on the profit. But really, we need uh, how you will mention this three, five, five years to do this. And one of the key takeaways of last year's uh, Explore USA uh, conference uh, was the example of Pico Sotos. And uh, you, you, you said the same for uh, three to five years, uh, the entrepreneur has to be on the ground, has to work 25 seven and to be dedicated to uh, his or her dream in order to succeed. Your words uh, prove that uh, fact uh, as well uh we're quite happy to to have you as a member and uh, looking forward to witness your american success uh, as well um friends partners uh, is there anyone who hasn't asked their question yet I believe that we had a good blend uh, of uh, very factual and uh, trend-wise presentation prepared by Evo and the input from uh, Lucas and uh, as well as from uh, business people, uh, both working in Bulgaria and in the United States made it uh, made that event. And uh, if we don't have uh, questions right now, Danny, um, Danny, yeah? uh, Danny, Danny, there is someone with us who is. Uh, I, I used to joke is the most experienced Bulgarian on planet Earth that has spoken and is still alive to buyers. And I hope he's still with us. He joined us in the beginning, uh, Pavel Kolaro from New York. Um, yes, thank you. I remember Rocky. that story. Yes, please, <laughs> Mr. Kolaro, go ahead. Uh, sure. That's, uh, Ivo, thanks very much for the introduction. Completely untrue and completely undeserved, but uh, I'll take it anyway. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, I thought this was a very, very interesting discussion. I thought these presentations were very, very helpful, and I thought that uh, the way the information was presented would be very, very helpful to anybody who would be interested in the US or Canadian market for that matter. Um, I think the key takeaways, which have already been mentioned a number of times, are patience, that this is not a, it's not a sprint, it's, it's a marathon, it takes a good number of years. The other is obviously focus and, and dedication of resources, which basically means you can't do this as a hobby or as uh, some sort of a speculative activity. You really have to spend the time, you really have to spend um, the money, and uh, you have to have the resources within your organization to do this. These are very important things. Um, and also, um, the fact that you really have to focus on a particular niche and not just kind of try to take over the market because it's it's really a like you guys said it's really a continent and not necessarily a country so i agree with all this stuff it's, it's very very important uh, so in terms of my experience and background i um i grew up in bulgaria but i've been in the us for about 20 years now and i'm currently the ceo of tremona foods which is an american-based yogurt company and speaking of yogurt, something very exciting today. If you go on Google, and I'm not sure if it's for the whole world or just for the U.S., but you know that little uh, doodle, that little picture that they have above the, above the search box? Today, they celebrate uh, Stamen Grigorov, who may, some of you might know is one of, the, one of the big sort of yogurt pioneers, which is wonderful and we didn't know. So it's uh, 
uh, it's 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 really good for uh, it's really good for Bulgaria. It's really good for yogurt, and it's really good for us as a company as well. Uh, so that's kind of a, a, a very nice side note. Um, so my experience is mostly in food and beverage and, and consumer packaged goods. And uh, yes, it's a very difficult market. But I think if you find the way, if you find the right niche to explore, if you really have a very interesting and unique proposition, you can totally do this. I, I also want to add that for the last five to ten years, I've seen, because um, I go to Bulgaria every year, sometimes multiple times, and I'm always interested in new products, especially in the food and beverage space. So uh, what I've seen is some really, really interesting, very innovative products. I think that we've, uh, to some degree, moved away from commodities like, you know, cheese and, uh, and, and rose oil and whatnot, which are still great, by the way. But we've moved into more value-added products, and there's some really great examples of really innovative brands. So uh, I think the days when, you know, we were just selling kind of big tins of cheese are somewhat behind us, and we can really kind of do interesting and innovative stuff. And just to give you an example, while we are an American-based company, uh, we do have very close relations with a number of Bulgarian companies. We um, buy for a new, we, we just launched a new line about a couple of months ago with superfoods, um, which we call, you know, functional yogurt, superfood yogurt. And it's basically, uh, you know, we buy these like matcha and maca and a C and all these like, you know, rare superfoods that we infuse our yogurt with. And we found a supplier in Bulgaria called Smart Organic. Some of you may know of them. And they've been supplying us with these superfoods. Uh, and apparently they're one of the sort of the big uh, exporters in Europe and they supply a big portion of the European market, uh, which was wonderful. And it was, it was cost competitive. It was very high quality product, probably better than anything we can find here in the States. And uh, we found uh, a way to integrate them into our supply chain. It's early days, but it's it's a great example of maybe not necessarily, you know, branding something, but finding opportunities for exports um, to do with with other companies. Um, and I'm actually a big proponent of, you know, it doesn't always have to be the full package. You can find a partner in the U.S. to supply them with some piece or some some innovation or something that you have, some value added uh, um, product, and kind of integrate it into into what they're doing and. Smart Organic have been providing this awesome product for us. And then on top of that, um, we've also been working with Probiotic. Um, um, they were part of some of those initiatives uh, last year. They supply a number of um, juice cafes here in New York City, where I'm based, with um, some of their products as well. Um, they have these uh, very sort of... Um, pathogen inhibiting strains, which make products um, probiotic, but also have these incredible health benefits. And they did this study both in Bulgaria as well as at Harvard to prove that. So it's an incredible product. We, we started buying from them as well. So, um, you know, while we make our, our products here and, and it was said, dairy is a very competitive space. And also there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, protectionism kind of around it. Uh, it's very difficult to export dairy products. Even for us to go to Canada is complicated. So, um, you know, importing importing yogurt would be difficult, but we can make it here. We can use not only the strains, but all sorts of other Bulgarian ingredients. And on top of that, also services. I mean, we have a, a packaging agency that's based in Bulgaria. We've outsourced quite a bit of our accounting and bookkeeping to Bulgaria, um, IT and, and whatnot. So there are many different ways to, co to, co to you know, cooperate. Uh, and as far as the challenges, I, I, you know, I don't want to repeat um, kind of what all the other speakers said. This is exactly right. You have to think long term. You have to focus. But the market does reward, you know, the ones that are patient and have a good strategy. So uh, that's kind of my quick way of, uh, you know, summarizing uh, the challenges and the opportunities in the U.S. market. Thank you, Mr. Kolarov. Uh, Ivo, thank you for the hands. Uh, for, for the help uh, in introducing Mr. Kularov. Uh, and I think that uh, time is running out and we are going to announce. And uh, last but not least, we have our president, I'm Chan Bulgaria, uh, President Olivier Marquette, joining us uh, today. Uh, Olivier, happy to have you in your busy Tuesday. And uh, please give us some final remarks uh, on behalf of the management board of the chamber. Well, thanks, thanks, Danny, and uh, hi, everyone. I'm really sorry I was not able to be at the beginning uh, 
I, I, I came during the, the, the discussion and uh, quite frankly, what I will say now uh, will be very uh, uninspiring compared to what we heard today from this successful uh, entrepreneur and businessman in Bulgaria, right? So, so I, I, th I thought it was really uh, an inspiring discussion. So I'd like to thank Ivo uh, and, and, and Yupka for, for being with us from uh, actually uh, the two coasts of the US. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad uh, you, know, you, you were able to, uh, to join and then help us uh, r running this event. So uh, as you all know, the, one of the, the key mission of, uh, of uh, Amcham Bulgaria is to to uh, to help and to promote the transatlantic relationship, and so I think this this webinar really goes to the heart of our mission, uh, supporting our members as well. And, and honestly, what what we heard today, uh, to me, is um, is is a wonderful example of uh, how uh, dedicated uh, uh, you know companies and entrepreneur uh, can enter even the the the, lar the largest market and, and and be successful. You know, I was quite amazed. Uh, to hear from this, uh, and sorry, mattress company, I, I did not remember the name, uh, but uh, being contacted by Walmart. So that, that tells a lot. Uh, and I think Bulgarians in general tend to be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, not, not so uh, uh, energized or, or sure of their, their skills and, 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 and strength. And to me, it's, it, it shows that even in the U.S., actually, a Bulgarian company can be extremely successful, and, and in a number in a number of, of different arena, right? I mean, we uh, uh, before entering the, to this, so I, uh, last year, as, as we said, we had Explore USA, and for example, we had Waltopia, which is very well known. But there is a lot more than the Waltopias, right? We whether it's about mattress, about IT company, and food and beverage, so that the whole bunch. Of, of, of activities of business sectors where actually Bulgarian companies are actually very successful in this in this market. And so I, I think whoever can be successful in the US, which is obviously a hyper competitive market, I mean, the world is yours, right? So, so I think uh, it, it was really a fantastic uh, uh, discussion and to hear uh, ex effectively directly from the people involved, uh, that, that, that's really the, the best. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, uh, well, to, to getting more Bulgarian company. And, uh, and I, I know Ivo, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and Yupka, I mean, are absolutely 100% dedicated, uh, to, uh, to promote and create more opportunities. So, so I'm glad that we have this very good relationship. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, in one of our next events, we'll bring other companies that also had success, uh, in, uh, in, uh, developing their, their business in the U.S. So thank you all for uh, being with us and uh, and again i uh, i'm sorry i missed the beginning but i feel very energized and uh, and optimistic after uh, listening to the the, the, the various uh, talks uh, by all of you so thank you and uh, looking forward to our next event i can make a, a small pitch i think our next one uh, danny if i'm not mistaken is even tomorrow right uh it, it's on thursday Oh yeah, we're well, only Tuesday. Okay, so in two days from now, so uh, yeah. the, uh, on 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 FCPA, different matter. Uh, but uh, you know, we uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad that uh, we are uh, offering uh, you know many of diverse uh, uh, ways to interact as a community, even though we cannot meet physically. And I'm the first one to be to feel so bad about not being able to travel to Bulgaria. Hopefully, uh, you know, when things reopen, I'll, uh, I'll be there. But uh, that's all. So thank you all again. And Danid, uh, I'll, I'll let you do with the closing remark if you have. Yeah, indeed. Thank you very much, Olivier, for your inspiring uh, closing remarks. And uh, everyone, thank you very much uh, for your participation. Ivo, personally to you, Luka, looking forward to cooperate with you in the, in the future. Uh, and as usual, as a good webinar tradition, I would like to ask every one of you that uh, has a camera to switch it on in order to put your smiley face on our screens to have a final screenshot of this fantastic webinar. In 10, 9, Houston, where are you? <laughs> and uh, to conclude, once again, thank you. It was really, really inspiring and uh, worth having you all here. Uh, a lot of good takeaways and uh, I do hope that in future we will have other opportunities to work together, not only in making webinars, but also to 
do some business across the ocean. Uh, and, Danny, could I, could I make sure my, my the PDF version of my presentation is made available to everyone? I would like it to reach as many people as possible. That's a must, Ivo, and uh, I would like to thank you on behalf of the AmCham team uh, that you prepare it, uh, we will circulate it. The webinar is being recorded. I am saying it at the end, but you know that it is part of our tradition. So uh, our colleagues and our friends from uh, the membership will get the presentation and the uh, recording of this webinar, and they'll enjoy my jokes and your fantastic input as well. Once again, have a nice evening or have a nice day. It depends where you, you are located. And take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye, all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.